Hi, I'm Rob, I'm Rob Kochman. Uh, I'm a product manager on Google Chrome. Hello, I'm Rafael Centron, and I'm a developer on the Microsoft Edge team. And uh, we are here today to talk about the Web Neural Network, or WebNN API. Um, it is an upcoming uh, potential web standard API um, that a bunch of us in the community are working on. Um, and so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why we're doing this. And I guess, you know, we talk about a new API. Um, in my job as a product manager on Chrome, I'm focused very much on enabling advanced web applications. And we talk to a lot of developers, and the way those conversations usually go for web app developers is, you know, they go on and on about how awesome and great the web is, and then, you know, when they're done with that, more often than not, we hear that it is very difficult to keep up with all the changes in the web platform, all the additions, all the new APIs. And so when we start talking about a potential new API, I've got to do the annoying product manager thing and ask, like, why do we need a new API? Like, why is this important? Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about why WebNN exists, and then um, well, Raphael is going to, you know, do the interesting part and tell you, like, you know, how it works and how you can use it and all that. So, all right. So let's start all the way down at the bottom of the stack uh, where the inference actually runs. And so for uh, CPUs, CPUs are awesome because they're everywhere, right? If you need universal reach. CPUs have you covered. Um, also great for you know, smaller workloads, maybe where you need less overhead or where you can tolerate less uh, overhead. Um, and you know, WebAssembly, of course, is, is uh, paramount there. Um, GPUs, my personal favorite. Uh, we need more power uh, and you need more efficiency. Um, GPUs have uh, not you know, quite the reach of, of CPUs, but still pretty great. And then historically, WebGL, WebGL2 has been the way to do that. Now, of course, WebGPU, state of the art, as Joshua was describing, amazing performance improvements. And so um, the reach isn't completely there, but we're working very hard on that. Um, we shipped that over a year ago in Chromium and um, you know, coming soon to other browsers. Uh, for NPUs now, or AI accelerators, um, even more possibilities. And so um, more efficient, um, especially for sort of long running tasks where um, you're really concerned about power consumption. Um, also, uh, they're basically just more compute on the device, right? Imagine you're using your CPU or GPU for other uses. Imagine you're doing graphics with your GPU, right? The MPU gives you more opportunities to do, um, to do more compute. And so, uh, yeah, MPUs let you do more. So uh, real quick, what's going on with NPUs? Um, they're becoming more uh, capable and more prevalent. And so uh, you know, Apple's been shipping their neural engine for a while now. Google shipping uh, tensor chips on uh, Pixel phones. Um, lots of chip makers like uh, Qualcomm, um, AMD, and you'll hear from Mo, uh, Intel, uh, are shipping uh, chips with uh, NPUs. And of course, Microsoft generating a lot of buzz with their uh, Copilot Plus PCs. So ultimately, why a new API? Um, we really don't want developers to have to choose between uh, all the goodness of the web and getting the, the highest performance uh, that you might get from you know, a native platform, right? And so the web has so much going for it, right? We all know this, right? It's, uh, you know, it's um, ephemeral, linkable, um, low friction, all these things, right? And so we really want to not require developers to sacrifice that to get the latest um, and best AI compute. Um, so just a few more points on WebNN before I hand it off. Um, so I haven't actually said what it is yet. So uh, it's a specification for um, uh, executing neural network graphs. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that actually means. Um, but uh, that's, that's what it is, you know, fairly simple, at least conceptually. Um, as an eventual web standard, uh, we intend for it to be, uh, the support to be built directly into web browsers. And so we've done this in Chromium already as an experiment. Um, and um, yeah, we hope to see that elsewhere uh, longer term. And then um, for uh, you know, all those browsers and the various uh, OSs work together to handle the integrations with the, the hardware. Um, and by hardware, like it's, you know, NPUs are, are the focus, but um, also uh, WebNN can access CPUs and GPUs as well. So it's sort of a single integration point um, for all of that. Um, and I should have mentioned earlier too, we're kind of focused on CPU, GPU, NPU as like kind of three distinct things, but um, we also seeing a lot of uh, uh, ML accelerators built into CPUs and GPUs as well. So there's lots of stuff going on here, not just, uh, not just NPUs. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all for me. Um, hopefully that kind of explains the why. And now for the really interesting thing in terms of like what we've done, what we have left to do, um, and how you can try it yourself. Here's Raphael. Thank you, Rob. Hello, my name is Rafael Cintron. I'm a developer on the Microsoft Edge team, and I represent Microsoft at the Web Machine Learning, Web GPU, and uh, WebGL working groups. So here's kind of how the, the layer cake works of Web APIs. 
I know some of this is very familiar to you. So um, WebNet is a bring your own model and framework. The top two blocks are your responsibility. You bring your model, you bring your framework. You can use Onyx, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx Runtime Web, or LightRT. The blue lines are what you can do today. So these frameworks allow you to accelerate your model using WebAssembly. And if you use Onyx Runtime for the web, it has an open source web GPU execution provider. WebNN brings you the red stuff, the things in red lines. On Apple platforms, we're planning on using Core ML. It is the only way to get access to Apple's neural engine. And it also provides uh, GPU as well as CPU acceleration and chooses for you depending upon how good your device is, what other things are running. Um, for Windows, when you're running on CPU, we're going to use LightRT with X XNN Pack uh, Delegate. And then it'll go provide CPU acceleration that you can't do with WASM today. And then, of course, on Google platforms, we're also planning on using LightRT and its various delegates that come with your phones or other Android devices. On Windows, we're planning on using DirectML. You give your graph to, to WebNN, uh, you call Compile, and it'll go and use you know, independent hardware vendors, write drivers for DirectML. DirectML actually comes with fallback shaders for every single operator it supports, but independent hardware vendors can go and, and add accelerators for some of the operators. So no longer will you have to install vendor-specific SDKs and stuff to ship with your applications. You just use DirectML, and it takes care of giving you a standard, I mean, to Chrome and Edge, a standard API. You can accelerate your ML across all independent hardware vendors. Uh, we have drivers for all of them. NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm. And my favorite part is, as when you write your driver for Windows, Windows case takes care of seamlessly multitasking your compute work across all applications so everybody gets their fair share. As a, a browser vendor, I really like that it does the heavy lifting. I have to go and support and facilitate people who have tens, sometimes hundreds of Windows and browser tabs. So it's nice that Windows does all this heavy lifting for me. So what's the current status? Today, it's behind a, f a flag in both Chrome and Edge. And we have uh, folks at Intel and Microsoft have been working on an execution provider for Onyx Runtime for the web. It's available now, um, all open source. And we have an origin trial coming soon, hopefully at the beginning of next year. For those of you who don't know what an origin trial is, it gives a preview. Um, it lets you preview uh, WebNN, in this case, on your website before it comes out. You sign up at the the Edge and Chrome websites, and you can give WebNN to your end users. And it, and it allows you to provide us valuable feedback on the, the API. It's expected even that the API is going to change in response to your feedback. So sign up for the Origin trial when it comes out and give us your feedback on the API. Let's do a demo. This demo is for Stable Diffusion. We showed this demo at the Microsoft Build Conference a few months ago. So Stable Diffusion, you, you type in what you want, and it, and it turns it into an image. So you see there in the up, upper right-hand corner, this is working on an Intel uh, Arc GPU, as Intel's uh, discrete GPUs. You can see the performance there. It's, soon it's going to change, and we're going to see it. So there it is on an AMD Radeon RTX 7900 GPU. You can see Task Manager on the right, how much it uses GPU. And then finally, on an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090, you can see the performance of Stable Diffusion. And it's all running in the browser. So how do you use it? You take your script and you download it. Um, in this case, you can Onyx Runtime for the web, but you can bring your own framework. Um, you tell it what execution provider you have. Onyx Runtime for the web happens to have a few. You can use the CPU one, uh, which accelerates your model with WASM. There's a web GPU one I mentioned before. It's open source. And now there's a WebNN one as well. You give it your device type, your power preference, and then away you go. You create your inference session, give the model your inputs, and run it. And it's all very nice and JavaScript friendly. So what's next for the API? Um, I didn't, I didn't include a screenshot of, the, of uh, that web page there, but it has all the operators we support today. If you go to that uh, web page, you'll see op all the operators and the implementation status across all of the backends we have. So please give feedback on the, on the offset. If there's any you'd like to see included or there's ones that don't work quite how you want, please give us feedback, and I'll send you the URLs at the end of the talk. Um, 
support for more frameworks. Here's hoping, and I'm looking forward to more frameworks that come out with a web and end backend. Uh, we have Onyx runtime for the web, but hopefully we'll have some more in the future. We're going to improve our adapter selection. In the previous slide, you noticed that you give the device type. We want to improve that and make it so that the browser more seamlessly picks which device is, is best for your model, like CoreML does. It'll be a challenge on Windows, but we're up for the challenge. Next, interop with WebGPU. Um, the way that stable diffusion demo worked is once it did inferencing, we had to bring back all of the inferencing stuff all the way back to the render process and then send it back to the GPU and then put it in a 2D canvas. Well, with interop with WebGPU, you can avoid some of these round trips back to the JS process. We can keep things on the GPU and display them with WebGPU. You can also, if you'd like, implement your own custom ops um, if the list that we've chosen is insufficient for you. We want more use cases. So try it out. Uh, there's a URL for samples, and that stable diffusion demo is available at aka.ms forward slash webnn, along with many others. So uh, learn more, and please send us your feedback. So thank you very much, and I'd like to give a shout out to all the people that made this possible so far, including colleagues at Intel Shanghai, and then colleagues at uh, Google, as well as my colleagues at Microsoft and, and, the, and to Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you.